as all. Probably even more strange for me as I'm uh, looking at a phone perched up on top of a, an Amazon box uh, to try and get this uh, uh, recorded properly. Uh, but we come to the Word of God this morning in this unusual uh, time uh, to get guidance and to get wisdom and to get encouragement. So I'm going to read the last part of the chapter uh, where Mark began in uh, John chapter 8 and then we'll take it from there. So John chapter 8 verse 48. The Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honour my father, and you dishonour me. Yet I do not seek my own glory, there is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died and the prophets died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You're not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Amen. And may God's word uh, touch our hearts uh, this morning. So the title that uh, I'm going to give to the message today uh, is taken from verse 31 at the beginning of our chapter when Jesus says to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Uh, we're going to think this morning about what it means uh, to be a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus is continuing to speak to the same group of people and uh, they're referred to here as those who had believed in him. As he was saying these things, verse 30, many believed in him. But what we're going to find out is that in fact these people are not true disciples. Up until now, we've talked about the fact that there were really three responses to the teachings of Christ. Uh, there were those who were confused, there were those who rejected, and there were those who believed in him. But in fact, what we're finding now is that there really are four responses, because that subset of belief um, has another subset. And it's people who believe at a certain level, but in fact, they're not true disciples. Now we see this as the the, the scene kind of unfolds for us here. So down at verse 37, for instance, he says, My word finds no place in you. Verse 43 says, You cannot bear to hear my words. And of course, eventually in verse 44, he says, You are of your father, the devil. We've met this before, actually, at the end of chapter 6 as well, where it says there in verse 66 that, many of his disciples turned back and followed him no more. So there are a group of people and they're referred to sometimes as those who believe. They're referred to sometimes as his disciples. But really when you drill down, you find that they are not his real disciples at all. They're not true disciples as it says here in this verse. If you abide in my word, you are, you're truly my disciples. So this, of course, is a very sobering thing uh, because we're finding out that there are people who believe something about the Lord Jesus Christ. They believe something about the gospel. They are attracted to him. Uh, they find his teaching interesting, seems to fulfill some sort of need that they have in their life. And they attach themselves uh, to the church. They learn the language of the people of God but they're actually not real disciples at all. I suppose Judas Iscariot, 
is the ultimate example of this. On the night of his betrayal, when Jesus looked at his disciples and said, you know, I, t I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. I mean, the rest of them didn't automatically think, oh, it's Judas that he's talking about here. And I can think of several people during the course of my life who once ran well, uh, people who you thought were genuine Christians, some of them I can think about who were prominent preachers and teachers, um, and now they're nowhere. They have they have renounced things. They've they've kicked over the traces. So it's it is crucially important for us to, as Paul wrote to the Corinthians, to examine ourselves to see whether we are in the faith or not. So the main thing that's really highlighted then as a characteristic of being a genuine follower and a, a true learner of the Lord Jesus Christ from verse 31 is abiding in his words. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciple. So abiding means to, to persist. It means to persevere. It means to, to continue just to, to keep on going and keeping at and persisting in the word and teaching of Christ. It doesn't, of course, mean that we will never make a mistake. It, never, it doesn't mean that we won't fall down at times, but it does mean that the, the pattern of our life and the general direction, the habit of my life is to keep going and persevere and to abide in the word and the way of Christ. Uh, John writes about this again in his first letter, actually, chapter 3, verse 3. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. I remember uh, reading about Eric Alexander, who was a, a preacher in Glasgow, and who greatly admired uh, Martin Lloyd-Jones and went to hear him preach. And he thought that he would, at the end of the service, uh, go and stand quite near where Lloyd-Jones was as he uh, shook the hands of the people and spoke to them uh, on their way out. He thought he might learn something about it. And he said he actually came away feeling fairly disappointed because he said the same thing to everybody. Uh, and as he shook their hands, uh, he would say, keep on, keep keep going, keep, keep going on. But uh, later on, uh, Eric Alexander said, as he thought about things, I suppose that really does sum things up for us as far as the Christian life is concerned. It's keeping on. It's just keeping going and persevering, uh, being steadfast and persistent in the teaching and in the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, it's really his work in my life that allows me to do that. It's the fact that the Lord Jesus taught in the parable of the sower that when the word of God is received into the soil of my heart, not me allowing it to bounce off, not me allowing other things to, to strangle or stifle it, but when I receive the word of God, it's God's word and it's God's spirit that allows me and gives me the strength and the ability and the power to persevere. It's, it's God's work in me that changes this and this perseverance is the sign of being a true disciple. It's the good work that he begins in me, that he carries on to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. And this word of Christ, as the verse there reminds us of, um, that we continue in is, is the truth if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Uh, notice as you read down the whole of this section how frequently truth is mentioned uh, in the passage. Verse 34, verse 51, he says, Truly, truly, I say unto you. Uh, he describes himself in verse 40 as a man who told you, uh, the truth. So it's his teaching, it's in his word, the Bible, that we learn the truth. No error, no deception, no corruption. We learn the truth about ourselves, our identity, who we are, where we came from. We learn the truth about God, about the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel. 
um, fundamentally and knowing this truth, we are set free by that knowledge. And that means freed from error and deception, freed from the, from the power of sin that affects people in so many different ways and cramps and restricts and restrains their lives, to be freed from sin's power and from death itself, as we're going to come on to uh, noticing in a, in a little minute. That all comes from knowing the truth and the truth setting us free. Well, these so-called believers are not happy with this. Uh, they don't like the implications of that. Uh, if they need to be set freed, then that must mean that they are slaves, that they're enslaved. And uh, they say, we've never been enslaved to anybody, which was rather an unusual, strange comment, given the fact that at that time, they were actually under the rule and authority of the Romans uh, who had invaded them. Somehow or another, that seems to have been shut off from their consciousness. Um, the statement of the Lord Jesus offended their pride, their sense of heritage, um, the importance of being associated with Abraham as Abraham's children. And, and by hanging on to this, they, they tragically miss the truth that he is teaching and therefore the freedom that comes from knowing that, that truth. And in fact, their attitude is described by the Lord Jesus as the same as their father, the devil. It says about him that he was a murderer and it says that he was the father of lies. Uh, very strong language, but it is the truth. And just like Satan in the garden, these people here are distorting misrepresenting God's truth and they will of course ultimately murder the Son of God and by doing that they're manifesting the features of their father. They call themselves believers but this is who actually they are. They're not following Christ and his word, they're not staying and abiding and remaining in Christ's word, they're not true disciples they're setting themselves up against it, and it's a sober lesson for us all. But there's something else uh, said about the true disciple as well, and it's down at verse 51, and it's this, again the truth, Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. I mean, if they were upset before, uh, they're seriously annoyed now. They say, you have a demon uh, you're a Samaritan, how could you possibly say that my followers will never die? It's ridiculous when we know that Abraham and all the prophets uh, are all dead. Of course, the Lord Jesus is properly defining death when he talks in this way. Death, which is not just something that's physical. Uh, there is, of course, spiritual death, and that's what he's actually talking about when he says, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Um, we were dead once in our, trans our trespasses and our sins, Ephesians 2. The book of Revelation talks about the second death. And in many ways, this idea is summed up in verse 21 of our chapter, where the Lord Jesus says, I'm going away and you will seek me and you will die in your sin and where I'm going uh, you cannot come. Um, this kind of, of death is, is a life forever separated from God but for the true believer they will never see death in that sense. There will never be a separation at any time from the Lord Jesus Christ and that is what eternal life is. Whoever believes in me shall never perish, but is passed from death unto life. As Paul puts it, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And this aspect of never dying makes, makes perfect sense when we understand who the Lord Jesus Christ is, the one in whom we place our trust. And that comes down from towards the end of our passage this conversation about Abraham goes on and uh, the Lord Jesus eventually says before Abraham was 
I am. We've noticed this before. This is a very significant form of expressing himself. He doesn't say before Abraham was, I was. What he's deliberately doing is taking the name of God. He revealed himself to Moses as Jehovah. I am that I am in the burning bush. Persistently, constantly in the present tense. Self-existent. The one who always is, who was, who currently is, uh, who always will be. Self-existent, uh, not requiring any kind of help or su sustenance or assistance from anybody else. Uncreated and eternal. He is the source of life and that's how he presents himself here and that's what he means as he takes the name of God and says before Abraham was I am and they know exactly what he means that's why they take up the stones uh, to throw at him and he is the source not just of physical life but he's the source of eternal life for the believer our life is hidden with Christ in God it is secure and it's safe and there will never be separation from Christ and his life that is within me. Nothing can do that. Nothing can separate from the love of Christ. And that is of great security to us in these uncertain and unparalleled times that we are living in just now. It is true that the disciple of Christ will never see death in this sense. We started with Christ when we placed our faith in him. We continue to live and trust in Christ's word and continue in it. And without any interruption, despite whatever else may happen in life, and we're not immune from the dangers and difficulties of life, whatever happens, I will always be with Christ. So that's what it really means when we talk about true discipleship. Somebody who continues in Christ's words and who will continue right into Christ's presence. May these uh, thoughts be of real encouragement and help to us as we think about them this morning. Now shall we pray? Lord, thank you for the reassurance and for the wisdom uh, of your word that comes to us again today in these uncertain times. And Lord, we pray that as we have the light of Christ's word shining upon our lives, that it will help us to examine ourselves as to whether we are true and genuine disciples in Christ. For those of us who are, for this reassurance of knowing what it means to be always with the Lord Jesus Christ, right into his immediate presence, that tremendous hope that we have as an anchor for our souls. And so, Lord, we commit ourselves to you, living as we are in this strange way in isolation in our own homes just now, May a sense of your love and your presence and your blessing rest on all of us, we pray. Encourage us in the greatness of our Lord Jesus Christ, our wonderful Saviour, in whose name we pray. Amen.